What's going on people? Welcome to your 28th I think After Effects tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to begin talking about my favorite subject in After Effects and that's lights. Now lights is the thing that separates like amateur clips from professional video clips in After Effects. This is what makes the difference from making your video look okay or making it look awesome. So let's go ahead and enough of the small talk. Can't wait to get into this. Let's get started. I dragged a clip of me in here because let's get a good pick. Uh, there we go. Mm, mm, not bad, not bad. We'll go with that one right there. And in order to work with lights, we first need to work with the 3D image. So light can't affect 2D image. So if you want to convert this. 2D clip to 3D, go ahead and click this checkbox, and now we can use the lights. So go ahead and click Layer, New, Camera, and just, or excuse me, that was an or tutorial, Layer, New, Light, and just like the camera, as I was going to say, this gives you a whole new layer with its all new properties. And for this type of light, let's double click it, you have a bunch of different options. We're going to be working with Spotlight, since this is the easiest to learn with. And a spotlight is exactly what you would think. It's just like if you were holding a spotlight, it has one source that's usually a cone shape that you can move anywhere around you want, closer, further away. And it's um, represented by this cone in After Effects. So you can see all the properties right here, such as position, um, point of interest. Again, the point of interest is where you're aiming it, just like this. The position is where the where you would be holding it I guess and that's pretty much all there is to this um again the rotation probably you're going to be working with only Y rotation for now and but that's not what we're here to talk about you learn all about those with camera what we're here to talk about is the light options that are specific to only lights now again I told you spot is the one we're going to be working with in this tutorial in the next couple of tutorials I'll tell you guys what this means but spot is pretty much just a spotlight and what you would think of a light and intensity let's go ahead and get that light out so you can see it intensity is how bright your light is so a hundred percent is pretty bright you can go beyond a hundred to get like super mega br like tanning light lights or you can go under a hundred to get like oh my god my light bulbs almost dying I can barely see light but for right now, let's leave this somewhere around 100. There we go. The color of the light is exactly like you think of it. Right now, we're having a nice dark green color. But let's go ahead and change this to something like um, a nice orangish color. And this should give us a nice warm um, orangish feeling. Again, let's go ahead and increase the light. And this just uh, brightens up the mood a bit. Let's go ahead and change that to a bit more yellow and bam look at that so again the colors color pretty pretty simple now the cone angle I'm gonna change this and I want you to take a look at it right here what this does is affects the shape or direction again if you have like um, something like four degrees it's gonna turn it into a laser pointer if you have um, something like above a hundred it's gonna turn it in just a huge light that goes in every direction so this is how you can well it pretty much cone angle can't say it better than that now the cone feather is a little bit different you see this where it kind of fades in fades out on the side what the cone feather does and again its default is 50 is it makes it fade in or have it be more precise and let me show you if you have it at zero this is going to give you a nice crisp edge and again this doesn't really look like a light at all but sometimes you want to achieve this effect when you're working with uh, After Effects. But a more natural would be something like close to 100, actually, where light kind of fades in around the edges. But the def default's uh, 50, so that's where we're going to be talking with in the tutorials to come, probably. But again, I just wanted to go over in this tutorial. Um, these are defaults for the light options under here. And if you don't know how to get to them, just go ahead and click that little light triangle. Again, make sure you're working with your layer in 3D. Watch what happens when I click this off 3D. It just turns back to normal because light can't work with anything but 3D. So if you're saying, all right, WTF is wrong with this, that means 
your 3D is not clicked. So again, these are your basic light options. If you want to move your light around physically, you either use this rotation or just go ahead and grab the point of interest. It's probably the easiest way. Or just go ahead and grab the light itself and move it around. But for now, that's it for this tutorial. Let me change this color. I just feel like um, give it a nice, oh yeah, this is going to be good. Oh yeah, that's what I was going for. But anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Those are your basics of light. In the next tutorial, I'm probably going to be showing you how to get like high quality um, lighting that they do in professional videos. But for now, just play around with light. It's the easiest way and best way you can learn on it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next tutorial. What's up guys, welcome to your 29th After Effects tutorial, and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over shadows. Now, well, I guess, let's just go ahead and get started. Enough with me talking. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open a new composition, and by open it I mean make one. Uh, let's just go ahead and drag a clip right here, get rid of this one. So now we have just a basic clip, uh, you can even have a solid if you want, but I'm just going to have a clip. Let me get a good still of me. And, and, oh yeah, that's a good one right there. And now, I made this uh, little thing in Photoshop, and it's just uh, my name. And make sure that when you make it, it has some alpha, which mean, uh, or transparency, you might call it. So as you can see, um, this has some transparency, you can see through it. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create a new light. So go ahead and click Layer, New Light. And make sure it's any light besides ambient. Ambient means pretty much covers the whole thing. Spotlight, um, yeah, just put a spotlight. And make sure this little cast shadows box is checked. Now go ahead and click OK. Bam, look at that. Nothing happened. And let me tell you why. Um, first of all, whenever you make a new composition, 3D is off by default and shadows can only cast on 3D. So go ahead and click those 3D boxes just like that. And now let me find my Z and move it out. Now, as you can see, we still aren't really getting any shadows. And when I mean aren't really, I mean we're not getting any shadows at all. And that's because whenever we want to cast shadows, this light is good right now. But we have to set up these layers so that shadows are enabled on them. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and click material options under your bucky layer and click uh, cast shadow see it's off go ahead and click on right there and now we don't have a shadow yet but that's just because it's not moved in the right direction so as you can see as we move this in the Z position we begin to get the shadow we're looking for but actually the shadow kinda sucks right now it just looks like pretty much like another layer really so we want to give it a realistic shadow so let me go ahead and change my intensity in my light uh... we're done working the only thing we're going to be working with now is light so under light options go ahead and give it a little more intensity brighten it up a little bit and now to give it a realistic shadow we probably don't want it this dark i mean uh... shadows just aren't that dark this is like solid black right now so what we want to do is lighten up the shadow darkness a little bit and there we go maybe even a little more but I want to make sure you guys can see it so adjust the shadow darkness and again this is under your light options um, shadow darkness now another thing that you usually want to do is take the shadow diffusion and this pretty much means the fuzziness of the shadow shadow darkness means how dark it is shadow diffusion means um, how fuzzy it is you probably want to change this to a few pixels like um there that's good right there 11 so instead of having nice hard crisp edges you have a little like faded away like a shadow usually is so I'm gonna put that at about 12 right there so again um, the key things you have to take note of is make sure the layer layers you wanna cast are turned to 3D make sure under the thing that's casting the shadow you have cast shadow on and another thing to make realistic looking shadows uh... you probably want to lighten up your shadow darkness and also your shadow diffusion wants to be somewhere in like the ten pixel range or whatever you you know whatever is useful for your uh, animation so that's your quick tutorial on what shadows are and how to use them in after effects um... i'll probably well 
I don't know what I'm going to be talking about in the next tutorial, so I guess you're just going to have to watch and see. But thank you for watching this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned a little something, but not too much, of course. Don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to teaching you something in the next tutorial. What's up, guys? It's Bucky, and welcome to your 30th After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over parenting. Now, what parenting is, is it allows you to work with uh, many layers at the same time and apply the same kind of um, animation to them and it's a lot easier just to show you like a thousand times easier so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now I'm gonna go ahead and drag this main clip into a new comp and get rid of this one and so now we have this uh, main video right here and I'm also going to drag this uh, Bucky symbol from last time right on the comp anywhere uh, you don't need to have any special symbol just make sure you have a couple layers so now as you can see we have two layers that we can move around independently of one another but sometimes you want to kind of connect these layers so one it's easier to work with and two um, that's kind of the animation you're going for so right now we can um, do things like scale these in two different things and uh, they aren't really affecting one another well when one thing is the parent of another thing it takes the same attributes of its child so for instance say we have this Bucky layer right here um, go down right here in your um, in your main clips and in your Bucky layer or the layer that's on top click under this parent tab and click clips main or whatever the other one is and what happens now is whenever you edit this main clip or the parent of it then the child changes as well so for instance um, whenever I shrink this you can see the child changes as well and that is a uh, pretty much what parenting is and it's not only the uh, scale of it but also if I transform any property um, such as again the position the scale even the rotation then the child changes along with it so any um, property that the parent has the child has as well but a neat thing to notice is this is that when you change the child the parent doesn't go along with it so I can go ahead and since this Bucky isn't the parent of anything it only has a parent then I can move this independently of one another so that's pretty much your basics the parenting um, it's pretty simple anytime you want to take the properties of something else just give it a parent and a child uh, pretty much has like a free-for-all for itself it doesn't um, adapt the properties of anything else I don't know if I'm saying it right but it's pretty much easier just to see than it is to do but um, yeah that's just pretty much as simple as it gets again I just want to give you guys a real quick tutorial and again the parent is under this main parent thing right there so I hope you enjoyed watching uh, your tutorial on parents that's probably all I'm gonna be going over for parents in the next tutorial I'm gonna begin animating text so I will hope to see you then then so don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time what's up guys welcome to your 31st After Effects tutorial and in this tutorial we're gonna begin working with text now hopefully you uh, know the basics of text just from like watching me in my last couple tutorials and you pretty much know how to put text on the screen well in this tutorial I'm going to skip the real basics because if you like ever sat at a computer before you're going to know how to do like put text on a screen and bold it and align it in this tutorial I'm going to skip the how to move text along a path so the first thing you need is obviously some text so go ahead and click layer new text and now your little text bar pops up uh, you could also just click your cursor on the screen and start typing but uh, this is a little more interesting so let's go ahead and I'm gonna type something this is some text and apples doesn't really matter what we type make sure you have a couple typos in there for good looks and now after you have text go ahead and select this text layer right here and then once this is selected go ahead and select this pen tool now you probably want to click this road up zero because this is going to give you a nice curved path now with the text layer selected and then when you click the pen tool 
go ahead and make a mask so click this click this this and something like that so now when you have that mask go ahead and click text under your uh, properties right here and what you want to do is click this little thing that called text and then from here what you want to click is path options and right here where it says path uh, you want to click mask one since that's the mask you just created and now you see your uh, text is automatically conformed to that path so again uh, your text layer path options path mask one now as you can see it's stuck to that path but it's not exactly animated yet along the path so in order to animate it what you want to do is go ahead and click this little stopwatch by first margin and I'm guessing uh, well first of all when you click that stopwatch it obviously means you can animate it and I'm guessing you're gonna want this to go to left to right since most people do so go ahead and scroll this all the way to the left and as you can see your text is scrolling to the left as this property goes to the left now go ahead and move later in your animation some and go ahead and scroll it to the right even more so let's go ahead and scroll it almost off the screen and as you can see my test I mean uh, my text is kinda of scrolling along that path so now whenever we play this animation um, we see that this text moves across the screen just how we wanted it to so that's your basics of how to move text along a predestined path and again let's see that one more time just because it is so beautiful oh man would you look at that and again you can add uh, different characteristics to your text if you want but this is the real basics I just want to show you guys um, how to move text along a real basic path so in the next tutorial we're probably going to be going over text more and I'm going to show you something else cool to do with it. But for now, that's all you get. So I guess you're just going to have to subscribe and wait to see the next tutorial. So again, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. What's up guys? Welcome to your 30 second tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use something called the text animator. Now what a text animator is, is pretty much a sweet way to animate text um, and it's different than your basic transform properties so let's go ahead and get started uh, the first thing I want to do is if you have your path from last tutorial um, get rid of that so you just have basic plain old text on the screen uh, nothing interesting about that so when you have text on the screen you're gonna have this text option right down here and you're gonna see you have this little thing called animate right here this is your text animator and what we want to do is animate position of this text and make sure you're not doing it in transform notice that there's position down here what we want to do is go to animate click that right and click position right there and now under animator 1 animator 1 uh, we're gonna have a position property and what this is gonna do is give us the position of the text right there but um, moving this would be just kinda useless because we could do that with the transform so what we want to do is open this range selector and now we see the start and offset and all this stuff so go ahead and move your position uh, somewhere down to like right there um, maybe like a hundred percent down or something and now you can see what the start and end does this range of start and end says where you want your um, text to be affected see if you won't only want to affect half of it right there moved to 50 percent and as you can see only 50 percent of the text has moved down see the other text is unaffected totally and again you can select the range in the middle by doing something like moving the start and the end point and then only your middle text is able to be animated so this range pretty much selects the range of text you want affected and the range you don't select is going to be totally unaffected by your animation so let me show you guys a neat little trick that you can do with this. Move this start to zero in the end all the way to a hundred. And this means that all of your text is going to be affected. That's why it all was moved down. So let's go ahead and in your start, go ahead and click that little stopwatch so it can animate. 
Then move your uh, current time indicator somewhere to five seconds or something. And then go ahead and scroll um, your text to 100. And as you can see, the text slowly jumps up like this. So what this does is say, all right, it's all affected and now none of it's affected and it gives you a cool little effect. So go ahead and scrub this all the way to a uh, zero or not scrub it, just move it. And now play your animation and you can see all of your text is becoming affected to ineffected and gives you guys a cool little text effect. Now we can enhance this even more by adding more properties to this. So let's go ahead and add an opacity property. And again, make sure you're at home on your current time indicator is zero zero in time. And go ahead and right on your animator one, go ahead and click add property opacity. And now at the very beginning, what you want to do is set opacity all the way to zero or somewhere close to it. And now as you can see, as our current time indicator moves more and more and text becomes unaffected, not only does it hop up, but it also fades into opacity. This is because it says, all right, at the beginning, zero to 100, everything was affected. So everything is gonna be totally transparent. But as we move along, then more and more text is not gonna become transparent anymore. So that's pretty much um, the basics of that. Um, let me play this for you guys. Now, not only uh, when we do this, does the text move, but also kind of fades in, kind of jumps up from nowhere. So let me play that for you guys one more time since it's just so awesome. Wow, would you look at that? I'll just sit back in my room for a second. So again, how I did that, um, you need to open a new animator with this animate, and then start and end. Um, it pretty much chooses how much of the text you want to affect and then just go ahead and change position and opacity and bam you got it so that's my quick tutorial on what text animator is and how to use it in the next tutorial we're probably going over some text some more and some other cool things you can do that but for now that's all you get so don't forget to subscribe and i look forward to seeing you next time what's up people welcome to your 33rd after effects tutorial and in this tutorial i'm going to show you guys uh... some more animation effects and how to create a common uh, kind of a waterfall animation so the first thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and work with our animator a little more and uh, we're going to animate scale so go ahead and click animate scale and now you see um, our little animator pops up and since we animated scale we probably want to change that so go ahead and change it to like uh, uh, 315 that's good change to whatever you want actually so uh... don't mind that the uh... letters are kind of look all bunched together and stuff that's going to change so um... after that what you want to do is go ahead and add some blur so we want to make it look like it's coming from out of focus to in focus so go ahead and click the add arrow and what we want to add is a property of blur so go ahead and take this blur and set it around let's see it looks good 25 looks pretty good to me and then once uh, this is done what you want to do is go in your range selector and we want to change the shape of this so in your range selector again right here under advanced this shape is the shape of the text square is pretty much how it is by default there's also um, triangle and as you can see our text has kind of a triangle looking shape um, around it's kind of like the same things except it's a little rounded more but since it's kind of a um, the effect we're going for is ramp up and what ramp up is is if you can't see text gets um, smaller to bigger and kind of ramps up in size what this is doing is pretty much it used the start and the end values and it kind of transitions from the start to the end values as you can see this is totally unaffected and this uh, last letter is affected totally so um, that's all we need right now so um, we don't have to work with advanced anymore so you can uh, minimize that but the next thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and change the start and end point 
So let's go ahead and take this endpoint, and remember from last time, let's move it all the way to somewhere around um, 35. That looks good. And when you do this, you see that instead of ramping through your whole text, then only um, a third of it is ramped up, and the rest is the end by default. So in order to achieve the effect we're looking for, what we want to do is kind of mess with offset a little bit. And what offset means is, as you can see, you can move the start and end independently, but offset means move them at the same time. So as you can see, as I increase my offset, start and end both move in the same direction, and as I decrease it, they move backwards in the same direction. So let's go ahead and animate this to get a nice little cascading effect. So let's go ahead and move this totally off the screen to the left. So let's see, it would be about at 39. Click the stopwatch, put your first keyframe in, go to five seconds or something, um, and move this all the way off the screen, which would be somewhere about 100. Looks good. Who would have guessed it? And now, as you can see, we get a nice little um, animation as we move the, uh, what's it called, current time indicator. So let's go ahead and play that. Probably should have moved it a little faster. But hey, you get the point. Let's play it one more time. Now that it's all loaded. Wow, would you look at that. That is some beautiful text right there. So again, another couple things uh, you would want to do is probably mess with the opacity a little bit so they kind of um, fade out and then fade in as they're appearing. But uh, we did that last tutorial, so I'm not going to show you how to do it again. But what I am going to show you is how to make... Um, well, I'm just going to show you so go ahead and put it somewhere in the middle so you can see what's going on and go ahead and in your animator click add property and go ahead and click anchor point now what this anchor point means is pretty much um well I'll just show you whenever you move the anchor point the text that's affected moves in either the Y or the X axis so as you can see this um, is move it in the Y axis and this first one kind of spreads it across like this. So this is uh, how you can achieve some neat effects as well. So um, again, that's with the anchor point. It just kind of offsets the text a little bit. So um, if you're going for that effect, don't forget to use anchor point. And that's how you can create a kind of neat cascading effect. And again, you would probably want to... Um, might as well change the opacity. we got a little time. Property, opacity go home set to zero and then as we move through our animation wow that is a nice looking animation right there so that's with the opacity set to zero at the beginning it kind of fades in and that is our finale for our uh, cascading waterfall text so again let's play it in real speed wow that is some beautiful work right there so uh, that's the end of your tutorial. If you want to get any more, then I guess you're just going to have to wait till next time. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Mess around with uh, cascading waterfall animations. And once you master this, you're ready to move on to my next tutorial. So again, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. So guys, welcome to your 34th After Effects tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to begin working with effects. Now, effects in After Effects is pretty much something special you can do to the video and this can include uh, changing the color of it uh, changing the brightness blurring your image or also just something totally random and different so let's go ahead and let me show you guys how to do this first of all you can only apply effects to the layers you want so in order to apply it to one layer go ahead and select whatever layer you want to apply it to right down here uh, since I only have one layer, it's easy, but if you have multiple layers, select the one you want to apply it to. And now, after you have that layer selected, there's a couple different ways you can apply effect to it. Uh, the most noticeable one, probably, is at this effects um, little tab at the top. Go ahead and click that, and now you see your whole list of effects. Um, these are just grouped in different categories, so for easier finding but pretty much these are all effects and um, they have a little arrow to expand on the right 
So go ahead and click any effect. Um, I'm going to click um, CC glass. That's a good one. And what this does, as you see, is apply a little um, glass looking, I don't even know, to the image. So now my video, when I play it, I look like the guy from Deliverance that plays the banjo. But anyways, no offense to banjo players. But yeah, that's pretty much what effects does. It adds some sort of special effects to uh, your composition. And again, there are hundreds and hundreds of these. And you can also um, download custom ones from the internet, but we'll probably get into that a little bit later. So anytime you want to delete an effect, go ahead under your effect and press the delete. Now, I probably shouldn't have done that, so here, re redo that. And what I want to, I said I didn't want to do that because first I want to show you guys how to toggle your effects. If you're working with effects and you have this minimized, anytime you want to bring up the effects, just select your layer and press E on your keyboard. And this will bring up whatever effects you have. So from there, you can go ahead and probably delete it. Just want to show you guys that first. Now, a different way in, um, like a way most people put effects on their screen, I believe, is in order to... Um, do this in an alternative way. You have an effects and presets panels over here. Let me expand it. And so, if you want to apply an effect this way, what you can do is go ahead and click your layer that you want to affect. Go ahead and uh, click one of these effects, like color correction or something. And then here, here's a good one. Go ahead and click. Exp oh, you don't have to click exposure, but I will. You can either drag it on your composition like this, or just double click it and you will get the effect applied to your image now this brings me to another thing anytime you apply an effect to an image you get this mini little I don't know like an effects control panel you also have settings under your effect right here but it's usually easier to uh, manipulate them in this little control panel so anytime you apply to effect um, I believe every single one of the time it has little presets and this is how you change the effect so for example we have exposure effect um, applied to this and exposure has a bunch of different settings that's a word I was looking for settings so again anytime you want to adjust any of these settings all of them are in here and they aren't always a uh, scroll bar some of them have little graphs and some of them have different stuff uh, for example if you search um, curves and I guess that brings me to another thing anytime you want to search for effect just go ahead and type in your search box don't really need to teach you guys how to do that but again anytime you want to search for one like a uh, color here's all the stuff you can do with color but I want to go curves which is kinda like color and again I want to apply this to my composition so I'll grab it and apply it to my composition and this also lets you know that um, anytime you have a layer, all of the effects are right here. And you can also apply many effects at the same time. So let's go ahead and edit curves. Um, let's bring this down, this down. And as you can see, some of them are graphical, some of them have drop down boxes. Let's uh, take my red and bring it down. As you can see, some of the red disappears. And another thing, and the last thing I want to point out is anytime you don't want to view an effect or don't want to have an effect or you just want to temporarily disable it on your main effects panel right here you have this little checkbox called FX this means toggle the main effect off so look at my exposure when it's on right now whenever I toggle it off the exposure goes away whenever I toggle my curves off the curves goes away so if I want to toggle them both off I get both preset so that's um well it's kinda of just useful if you want to just like uh, avoid it for a little bit then I guess that's uh, what you would do if you want to get rid of it totally then just go ahead and delete it but again the main things I want to stress are how to get effects on your composition and also that you can have many effects at the same time and aside from that anytime you want to edit the settings of the effects which every effect has you gotta go in this uh, go you gotta go in this effects control so that's your real quick tutorial on how to work with effects and I will end for you guys by applying this um, CC glass effect because I know you guys like that so much. Where are you? CC glass. 
There we go, right there. <laughs> so again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you learned a little bit in effects. We're probably going to be going over more in the next tutorial. But again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next tutorial. What's up, guys? Welcome to your 35th After Effects tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use something called presets. Now, what a preset is, is pretty much a way that you can reuse an effect or um, animation once you get it just how you like it. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what clip you get. Uh, it's just a test. So now let's go ahead and add some kind of uh, animation to it. So we'll go ahead and keyframe the position. And then let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, zoom in, in like five seconds or something and then uh, in a little bit we'll move the position over and then let's go ahead and animate something like uh, opacity that looks good and change this to zero and start it out at a hundred so here's our real quick animation it slides down and then fades out and now let's go ahead and add an exposure as well so let me go ahead and drag exposure on here and once I get my effects you can see that um, our exposure can change as well so let me just set this keyframe it to a hundred I just want to get something noticeable so this is why I'm doing this so now let me show you guys what a preset is a preset is a way where you can save all of these things um, so you can reuse them later on so let me go ahead and expand this right now and uh, there we go so anytime you want to save any of these settings and apply it to another layer, all you have to do is um, control click the ones you want to use. So I want to use exposure, position, and opacity. So I'm going to click opacity, hold down control on my keyboard, click position, and then go ahead and click exposure. Now once I have those selected, what I'm going to do is go up to animation right here and click save animation presets now go anywhere you want to save it and then go ahead and save it I'm gonna save mine as Bucky and by default it'll be FFX this means After Effects preset so now go ahead and save now anything you apply this preset to is gonna have these settings of exposure position and opacity so let's go ahead and get rid of this just so I can prove it to you guys and let's go ahead and make a new composition with uh, here we go just make anything a new composition so let me get rid of this so now we have um, a composition right here I might as well put a starting point now we want to apply that preset to this layer right here so go ahead and highlight the layer click effect or excuse me animation apply animation preset and then go ahead and double click uh, that anim that excuse me preset you just saved and as you can see that preset is now applied to this clip as you can see it now moves down right like that so in order to prove it to you guys my animation exposure is right there and also my position and opacity is right here as well so that's a real quick tutorial on how you can use um, presets if you have like um say you did something with like color correcting and you're making a whole movie and you want to apply it to a bunch of scenes or you got a real cool animation that you worked with a long time and you want to apply it to a whole bunch of layers this is how you can do that so again anytime you want to um, get a new preset just go ahead and click animation save animation preset and anytime you want to use any of your presets just use apply animation presets and right here this will give you a list of your recent presets so again that's a real quick tutorial on presets I'm sorry I couldn't make a cooler animation, but I want to stick with basics. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you learned a little something, and I look forward to teaching you in the next tutorial. What's up, guys? Welcome to your 36th After Effects tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use Adobe's built-in presets. Now, in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to make your own presets and apply it to like any uh, composition you want. But uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Adobe also has um, probably hundreds of built-in presets. And aside from these built-in presets, you can also um, download different presets from the internet. So let me show you how to do that. Go ahead and get any clip you want, 
and then go ahead and make sure you highlight the layer that you want to apply the preset to. After this, you want to go up to animation and browse presets. And what this is going to do is take you to all the um, well preset um, custom made. Uh, how do I say it? Adobe's built-in. There we go, built-in presets. So here is a uh, well. They're pretty much self-explanatory right now. Here's some built-in backgrounds that Adobe has. Um, here's some, here some built-in behaviors, which is just like effects, kinda. And um, again, you got some custom transitions, um, custom text effects, which I'm going to be showing you in a little bit. But for now, um, a simple thing we can do is go ahead and put image creative. And this pretty much just uh, it it like colorizes it. And let me go ahead and pick one right here, colorize infrared. That should show up pretty good. So go ahead and double click that. And as you can see, um, this is a built-in preset that has a bunch of different custom values on it and you're not just stuck with those values if you go ahead in your effects you now have all of these things right here that you can manipulate just like you want so if you say alright I want this preset but I wish it you know I wish uh, that the color was a little different you can just go ahead and change that and bam look at that so that's one way you can work with the custom built-in presets again that's animation browse presets so not only can you um, apply these built-in presets to videos but you can also do it with text and that's one of the main things um, I use the presets for so let's go ahead and delete this and let's type some text on our screen but some um, this is some text and soon enough it will look like the matrix make sure you type every word wrong or else it won't work and now I'm just kidding by the way now let's go ahead and put that in the middle of the screen move our current time indicator to the beginning and now I'm gonna show you guys how to apply presets to text and this is gonna give you some sweet um well animations so instead of using the animator like before I'm gonna show you guys just highlight this text layer right here go up to animation browse presets and in your text folder right here if you aren't in your text folder just move back until you get in your text folder and go ahead and click this and then go ahead and um, these are all the things you can do with text probably the one you're going to be using most often is animate in this is how you animate text in I don't know if you could have guessed that or not but um, my two favorite ones are espresso I which you can see the preview right over here and also raining characters in and this reminds me of like a matrix kind of thing so um, as you can see the uh, previews over here but if you double click it it's gonna apply to whatever layer you have selected so now if you go ahead and press E you see that the effects are already applied to that so go ahead and play this press and spacebar and as you can see my text now rains down and all I had to do is click a couple buttons so this is a lot easier than using the animator um, just go ahead and click a button instead of trying to animate all that yourself and again if you want this to move faster or slower um, all of the properties are right in your little um, drop down panels right here so uh, there we go I shouldn't have messed with that my animation stopped but again let me zoom in on this but again anytime you want to use those text presets um, these can give you some real cool intros and stuff so don't forget about that and that's that for that tutorial so again you can ab apply um, custom presets to both um, compositions and also text so thank you for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time what's up guys welcome to your 37th After Effects tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how to mess with time a little bit and things like how to um, put your video in slow motion how to speed it up how to put it in reverse and how to do some other cool stuff so the first thing I want to teach you guys is the real basics so let's go ahead and create a new comp uh, I'll get that comp of my sister again right here so let me get rid of these they annoy me so now we got a basic comp of me, uh, my sister, buttering some toast right there. And 
The first thing I want to teach you guys is the real basics of how to speed up and slow down this animation. So let's go ahead and click on the layer we want to work with. And actually before this, go to um, composition, uh, composition settings and put this at like 5, an extra minute. That way we can get our video, but our composition is longer. So we can, uh, whenever we speed up the video, it, uh, well, just do it. You'll see why. So now that we uh, have this video in real time, nothing new, change here. And say we want to speed up or slow down this layer. So what we would do is we would go to layer, time, and then you would go to time stretch. Now it says stretch, but you can shrink it as well. And whenever you stretch it at a factor of more than 100, then what it does is put it in slow motion. It takes your layer or video in for every minute it would stretch it to two minutes so let's go ahead and actually let's change that to 300 or something and now as you can see the new duration will be 12 minutes and it used to be four or something so now when we play this see she is three times as slow as she would be so now let's say we want to speed that up so now go to layer time and then go to time stretch and then go to something like uh, 20 and this would make her five times as fast so click OK and as you can see the layer now shrinks because what it's doing is it's compressing everything and making it speed up so let's go ahead and play that and wow look how fast she is oh nice look at her butter that bread <laughs> and so that's how you uh, either speed down or speed up a layer again time speed up or speed down S slow down or speed up there we go uh, time and then go to time stretch so let's go ahead and stretch that back to a hundred percent and I want to show you guys how to reverse this now there's a shortcut to reverse it and it's that control R control alt R on your keyboard and if you have a Mac it's like command uh, option all or, or something I don't know I don't use Mac so and I know I'm probably going to get a lot of negative comments about that but anyways the point I want to show you guys how to reverse this video anytime you want to reverse a layer what you need to do is go up to layer time and then you need to go time reverse layer and as you can see now you get a little red bar at the bottom of your screen so let me um, find something that will actually show a reversing right here walking backwards probably so now play this and now you can see that the entire movie is reversed so it's kind of slow now just because it's uh trying to render it don't get fooled don't think that uh i messed with timer mapping or anything but yeah this is pretty much how you reverse a layer again the shortcut for that is uh control alt r so again that is how you slow down and speed up a movie and that's also how you reverse movie so hopefully combining these two things will get you some pretty cool effects. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to freeze frame and the problems that come along with freeze frame and how to correct it. So in the next tutorial, you'll be able to be a pro at freeze framing anywhere in your animation. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time. What's up, guys? Welcome to your 38th After Effects tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to create freeze frames. Now if you don't know what a freeze frame is, it's pretty much a video clip that plays at normal speed and then when it gets to a certain point of time it freezes on that frame. It looks like they're pausing and then after a couple seconds or however long you want to create it, it just resumes playing again. So it's a really cool effect and I'm going to show you how to do it properly in this tutorial. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get a video clip and drag it into your new composition to create a new composition so now we have a composition that's the same size as the video so the first thing we want to do pretty much is edit the composition settings and so go up to composition composition settings and expand your composition by like a minute or something and now you can see our composition is longer than our video our video ends right here but our composition keeps on going and if you say alright why'd you do that because whenever we create a freeze frame what we're going to do is take a frame and freeze it for a certain amount of time. So we're going to end up with a clip that's longer 
than our regular clip depending on how long that freeze frame is for. So that's why we want to expand the composition so we can see that data. So now let's go ahead and start working with freeze frames. Now in order to work with the freeze frame what you need to do is select your layer right here and select layer time enable time remapping now what this does is let me shrink this so you can see is it puts a time remapping setting right it puts pretty much two keyframes at the beginning and end of your animation right here and these keyframes represent points in time of your video so if I show this graphically you can see let me click time remapping you can see that your video is playing at a constant speed. Again, uh, the x-axis is the length of your composition, and as the y-axis grows, it just means that it's playing in a normal speed, nothing new. So what would we do? Let's go back to normal view right here. How would you think that you would um, edit this so you can set up time remapping? Well, what you could do is this you could set go to position like right here let me find a good air right here when she's eating the toast and right there and you can go ahead and create a keyframe right here and then go back a little bit right here and a little bit longer and go ahead and create a keyframe and then when you go to your graphical editor just move this down and as you can see it plays for a little bit right here and then let me move this even more so it'll get a nice longer freeze frame so it plays normal speed right here and then when it hits this the composition keeps going but your video stays in time it doesn't go anymore so as you can see this is one way you can create uh, uh, what's it called a freeze frame I was about to call it a keyframe so let me play this and you can see in the video plays stops right there so if you're thinking alright I can create a keyframe, or excuse me, a freeze frame that way. So, enough with this tutorial. See you later. Well, not so fast, Hoss. There's one problem with this, and yes, it is a major problem. Whenever you do it this way, as you can see that the ending slope is a different slope, and what this means is that this portion of the video right here is going to play at faster speed since it's a steeper slope. Again, the... Um, less dramatic the slope the how do I say slower it plays the more steep the slope the faster it plays so even though we created a freeze frame successfully right here by um, having it totally the same whenever you get right here it's gonna play at a faster speed so this is not the ideal way to create a freeze frame and I just wanted to show you that because I know a bunch of you guys were gonna do it so let's go ahead and um, in our animation again just get rid of all your defaults go to a place you want to freeze and now I will show you how to success successfully create a freeze frame go ahead and click your layer click layer time enable time remapping and then go to some place you want to freeze like right there go ahead and click your keyframe button right here to add a keyframe looking familiar well not so fast what you want to do here is click the page down button on your keyboard this is going to move your composition or video one keyframe and then you want to go ahead and click this again so if you scroll in as you can see we now have two keyframes right next to each other so from there make sure you only have that one selected and go ahead and press shift on your keyboard and select this last one now go ahead and undo shift and you can move both of them at the same time and now if we look in our graphical editor right here our freeze frame was successfully created right here and it kept the slope right there so again this is normal speed this is a freeze frame and this is normal speed right here as you can see this slope is not more um, intense or less intense um, same angle all throughout so that is how you successfully create a freeze frame and let me play this video for you as you can see it's slow just because it's rendering but this is real speed and now it freeze frames right there and then when we get to the end of our freeze frame I'll play it 
and boom back to normal speed so again that second way is the ideal way and the only way where you should be creating freeze frames again create a frame a keyframe where you want your animation to freeze then press page down and then when you press it create another keyframe and select the ending two frames and press shift and move them in this way as you can see in the graph ethical graph ethical what the heck graphical editor there we go we get a nice ideal animation with successful keyframes and we don't speed up or slow down anything so never do it the first way always do it the second way and this is how you can create successful freeze frames so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next tutorial what's up guys welcome to your 39th tutorial in after effects and in this tutorial i'm going to be going over something called motion tracking now what motion tracking is is it allows you to, it allows you to take one layer such as this text right here and have it follow along with something on the screen and what i'm going to be doing is taking the movement of my head as it bobbles all around the screen and attaching this text to it so it follows along with it and this is how they use special effects to let's say you have a video clip of something and you want to edit something in like a 3d animation or a text like i'm doing or any solid object this is how they do that so it's incredibly difficult to explain through just talking but once you see it you'll be like oh nice because it is nice so let's go ahead and the first thing you need is a video clip and I got this video clip of me talking to the camera about something and I also have a solid object that is my name in a hot pink for viewing purposes so once we have a video clip which we're going to track and a solid that we want to attach to it we also need another null object layer so go ahead up to layer new null object and what this is going to do is create the information or store the information to track. It's pretty much going to hold all the keyframes, which you've seen in a little bit. Next, you want to go ahead and open your tracker control panel right here and go ahead and select the layer that you want to track. Now, this is the layer that moves that you want to store the position from. So it should be your main video clip. And once you have this selected, go ahead and click track motion now you can see that everything else disappears like your text layer and everything else this is because you don't need that now you only want to work with track motion from here so as you can see you got your composition panel right here in this new layer that you can track motion so go ahead and um, get this little track point and highlight it all and move it over to a point that you want to track now I don't want to track um, my eye or anything because my eye is going to be blinking and closing and I don't want to be tracking anything in the background that my head's going to cover up I want to track something that's going to stay the same the whole time so either my eyebrow or my nostril which I'm gonna or maybe my chin or something something with high contrast so Adobe can pick it up easily now let me go over what these boxes mean this middle box right here that you can move around is going to get the data that um, you can track pretty much in this outside box right here this is a search box this is going to search for all the pixels again you can make it really big but it's going to take a longer time to track so you usually want to get it as small as you can to give it a small search area so it knows where to look so now that we have um, I'll go over these boxes more in a little bit but pretty much you need to know to put this point where you want to track this is a quick tutorial don't don't forget and now once you have that set up go ahead and click this uh, play button and it's going to go ahead and track that motion uh, go ahead and click it it's called analyze forward so click it and as you see the box moves along with my head now go ahead and after a little bit or however long you want just press stop and now we have this huge path that attract the pixels and if there's one pixel sometimes one pixel gets like way off maybe it would track my eye for like a half a second just go ahead and move that keyframe back but this one looks pretty good so we got the motion path just like we would if we keyframed it all out but this is a lot easier way to do this now how do we apply this motion to our null object layer 
Well, what we want to do is go ahead and put edit target. And by default, it's top layer. But if not, go ahead and click your no layer, then click OK. And now, go ahead and once you have that target selected, go ahead and click apply. And go ahead and click OK. And now, once you see in our null object layer, we get this new position. Let me minimize this. Right there. We get this new position tracking right here. So now, as you can see, our null object now moves along with that frame, or excuse me, that uh, path right there. So if we're saying, all right, we got the null object to move along with my head, but how do we get the title to move along with my head? Well, that's easy. Anytime you want a title to stick to a null object, all you have to do is highlight the title right here and click parent and click whatever you want it to parent to. So let me go ahead and and now I'll show you our final composition so look up here and I will play this animation for you it's playing it didn't get the position yet and now once it hits it our title now moves along with my head just like we wanted it to and then that's where I stop keyframing and that's where it stops so that is how you can pretty much add um, special effects to move along with an image after you already shot it. Again, let me play that one more time. Um, not keyframed yet. And now it's attached to that motion track. And watch how the title moves along with my head. So instead of having to keyframe that frame by frame and creating a real annoying path, this is a real easy way called motion tracking. And again, don't forget tracker controls, track motion. When you, uh, Get your null object, edit the target to the null object, and then apply it. And then it puts that position keyframes in your null object. And this is uh, real useful because when you do this, you can put a bunch of things parent into that null object. So again, we're probably going to be going over this uh, a little more in the next tutorial, but I just want to give you guys a real quick tutorial on how to do it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Shouldn't have hit my microphone there, but. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.